All right, what's happening, y'all? It's your boy Rico from Street Scores. And as you can see in the title, the Washington Commanders used 20 of their 33 formal combine meetings on offensive line. Out of 33 players that they formally met with at the combine, the 2023 NFL combine, 20 of them were straight offensive linemen. So does this clearly show that offensive line is the biggest need for this team, or at the very least, the position that they're gonna be the most aggressive about fixing, especially just this entire off season? Because even though these were draft prospects, it shows that it's such a big need that we may heavily pursue offensive linemen even in free agency as well leading up to the draft. Remember, Rivera said at the combine dressed just like this he said that he wants to do enough in free agency to where by the time they get to the draft they can draft who they want to draft and not who they need to draft he wants to go best player available in the draft absolutely love that one of my favorite things i've ever heard ron rivera ever say probably so if offensive line is this big of a need 20 out of 33 meetings we're probably going to bring in some offensive linemen in free agency and that's really interesting but of course with this type of video i'm updating y'all on the prospects list that they're targeting if you already saw part one, you already know, so I don't want to do an entire breakdown, but we're going to take a look at a list like this and like this. We're going to do a deep dive into everybody that the commanders are targeting right now, and we're going to take a look at what our potential biggest needs are just based off of how interested they are in certain positions and whether or not they need to put more time and effort into solving certain positions that they may not even be looking at. But offensive line is clearly one of the big ones. And of course, I also want to take a look at the commander's depth chart and what we currently have on offensive line and see what would be my favorite scenario as far as fixing the o-line we're moving samuel cosme from right tackle to right guard be our best solution and then you find the right tackle we're gonna dive into all of that and more but before we do make sure you subscribe to the channel at the bell next to the subscription button so you get a notification immediately and every time i release an informative and opinionated video just like this one make sure you pull up every sunday for the commanders live stream call in show where y'all call in you voice your opinions you ask whatever questions you may have all of that we talk everything football commanders it could even be basketball it could be anything game and anime whatever you want to talk about join the show call in you're a part of the show it's really y'all show more than anything else i'm just like the mediator kind of and then of course stay tuned for all of the content upcoming updates on videos like this as of right now we're on 47 confirmed targets for the commanders it's gonna get well within like 60 maybe even get closer to 100 by the time we get to the draft so i'm gonna keep updating this over and over again every time we add a huge group of people especially after we start doing pro days which pro days do rivera and martin mayhew jack the rio eric bienemy attend and things like that i'm gonna keep updating this list with all of those updates coming out and without further ado let's get it So the commanders were able to formally meet with 33 combine players and 20 of them were offensive linemen. 10 tackles, 5 guards, and 5 centers. So does that mean that offensive tackle is the biggest need out of our biggest need of offensive line for the team? Do they feel like offensive tackle is the thing that we need to attack? Which indicates that maybe they are thinking about doing what I hope that we do is move Samuel Cosme from right tackle permanently to right guard, not this back and forth that they were doing last season where he couldn't get adjusted and become great at either one. While battling injuries at the same time, only in the second year of his NFL career already being a raw prospect coming out of the draft I mean it's just like we were trying to mess him up so permanently move him to guard I would say I feel like that's the most obvious decision right there then from there we got to decide what we want to do of course Chris Paul showed a lot in that Cowboys game at the end of the season, but was it enough to trust him to be your franchise starting left guard from here on out? I feel like he should at the very least be allowed to compete for that starting left guard spot, but it shouldn't be handed to him. But either way, I feel like we need to focus on tackle because Samuel Cosme moving from right tackle to right guard sounds like, honestly, move Charles Leno from left tackle to right tackle. I feel like he's a solid left tackle and gets hated on a little bit more than he deserves. But if you move him to right tackle, his job should be a little bit easier, even though that is a transition. Being 
being used to kick stepping out to your left versus kick stepping out to your right is a completely different thing so if you feel like that transition may be too much for him then maybe you draft a top tier tackle and have him at right tackle until charles leno leaves in free agency we probably let him go maybe we cut him or whatever and then that guy moves from right tackle to left tackle but maybe for this 2023 season especially with a lot of these offensive linemen not being super polished like broderick jones paris johnson jr darnell wright anton harrison the other ohio state offensive tackle dewan all of these guys have a little bit of technique things that they can work on here and there so if you want to hide those weaknesses and also not worry about charles leno trying to transition from left tackle to right tackle maybe you draft say like a broderick jones you have him at right tackle this season and then you think about possibly cutting charles leno in 2024 maybe 2025 or whatever and then you move broderick jones to left tackle then and then you figure out right tackle at that point who knows i feel like ideally though best case scenario charles leno can move the right tackle and ball out it's easier than playing left tackle you draft your left tackle in this draft maybe you bring in a top free agent to be one of your starting tackles who knows and then you move samuel cosby to right guard because i believe in his talent i think he can end up being literally like a brandon sheriff at right guard if we just consistently put him there because this tape at right guard last season wasn't that great there were flashes but he was getting beat occasionally but again he was recovering from an injury and they had him going back and forth between right guard and right tackle so much that he could never get adjusted to right guard the way he should have so i feel like an entire off season of him being the right guard i feel like he would go out there and play potentially at a pro bowl level for us at that position so again after that you're just trying to figure out what's going on with the tackle position and say maybe we go get orlando brown highly doubt it i'm pretty sure we're gonna go bargain bin shopping mostly because ron Rivera has already made it clear that one of our main priorities this offseason is to re-sign the guys that we already supposed to have on the team like keeping deron Payne, probably extending cameron crow long term this offseason before he goes out there in the 2023 season balls out and then demands way more money bringing cole holcomb back ron Rivera already said that that's one of the priorities is bringing him back however they got to do it so a lot of our money and capital is going to go into bringing back our own guys resigning our own guys so we're not even going to have that much money to hit outside free agency with anyway so i don't expect us to go after like an orlando brown but just say if we did then maybe he's your starting left tackle or right tackle probably right tackle charles leno's just starting left tackle even though paying your right tackle more money than your left tackle is a little insane but whatever either way you can switch them orlando brown left tackle charles leno right tackle samuel calls me a right guard then maybe you go for a top center or a top interior offense alignment maybe not even the first round but maybe the second or third round to compete with chris paul and then if chase rulier gets hurt there's a guy there that can start at center for you so there's a lot of different scenarios that we can go with but i'm done taking up y'all time with all of these hypotheticals just wanted to talk about the current offensive line in the depth chart so far right now but let's go ahead and get to these prospects because i know that's what a lot of y'all are here for for the most part and this list will make a lot more sense as we get further into the process because again as of right now these are my biggest needs to me that i feel like we have this is what we need to address first and foremost of course i'm gonna say it every time franchise quarterback i believe in sam Howe's talent but we don't know for sure yet so i'm not necessarily saying go and draft cj stroud like trade up for cj stroud or nothing like that but until you have a franchise quarterback in today's nfl really nothing else matters so that's technically our biggest need but it may be filled by sam Howe. you never know it and then after after that is clearly offensive line cornerback linebacker tight end I feel like tight end is an underrated need but we'll see because i believe in the ceiling of the tight end group but i just don't necessarily love the floor but again i've talked about that in other videos and live streams if you wanted a more in-depth breakdown of our tight end position go check those out and then just based on what we have on the list so far we have 21 offensive linemen out of the 47 confirmed meetings 10 dbs and then so on and so forth and then the highest draft pick for each position so far out of the draft network's big board again i'm always just going to use them because i feel like they do the best job they have the best consensus and collaborative big board because there's so many different guys responsible for so many things and they all come together to put together their big board so no big board is completely accurate ever we really won't even know who had a good draft really till two three years down the road it's really hard to grade even a draft until years later so a big board of course 
nobody's ever completely right but i just feel like they have so many people that i trust involved that i'm always going to use their big board it's just especially to be consistent because again year to year of me doing this i just want to stick with one websites brands companies big board and just go from there to there and so far big board wise the highest cornerback we have is fifth overall the highest tackle is eighth the highest interior offensive lineman is 24th and so on and so forth and that may also show what needs you have because even though we technically do have a lot linebacker need if the highest linebacker that they have confirmed to meet with and show interest in is the 86th player on the draft network's big board then maybe it's not that big of a need and maybe they're willing to wait until like the third round to try to get a linebacker type of thing whereas cornerback offensive tackle and interior offensive line even ignoring how many of them there are just based on how high the players are that they're interested in shows that okay we may tackle this in the first round second round at the latest type of thing so watch out again tight end don't sleep on that my boy darnell washington don't sleep if we trade back that would be a dream case scenario to end up with him i don't even care who else we get we get darnell washington even me not even just necessarily being a georgia bulldog fan i just feel like that will take our offense to another level i still don't understand where the darnell washington hate comes from but that's just me and then let's get to the list man so just to update i'm not gonna go down this entire list i'm gonna scroll slowly if you ever want to just pause on any certain prospect to take a look at them you can again it's color coordinated by projected rounds and then there are some guys like this where the draft network doesn't have them on their big board yet and that's not to say that they're automatically below these other guys that are and that they'll go undrafted or anything i mean sometimes the draft network hasn't had a guy on their big board until like early april late march and then they'll shoot all the way up to like this area like second third fourth round and things like that but just for some reason nobody has watched enough for this person's tape to have them on their big board yet and things like that or maybe they just are just not that good or whatever but who knows so don't be surprised if any one of these guys go from the bottom to somewhere in the middle so don't count them out but again just looking at the list just to break it down for sure you got christian gonzalez as the highest rated player on the draft network's big board that the commanders have shown definitive interest in and i know a lot of y'all saw that jack del rio thing going around where he had like a list of players he had their picture and like certain breakdowns of them like certain notes and things like that christian gonzalez's notes were like huge it was a lot and i wouldn't be surprised if the commanders find a way to trade up for him because there's clearly a lot of interest there and then it's a slew of offensive tackles offensive linemen in general thrown throughout the first round you got paris johnson jr broderick jones peter skaronski dewan jones john michael schmitz all confirmed combine meetings formal meetings sit down watch tape together whatever they do how much do you love football the typical questions scenarios what would you do in this situation or explain this bad moment you had in this game explain this great moment and why you did that in this game all of that type of stuff the super duper set aside a lot of time sitting down with either ron rivera martin mayhew or a collection of guys maybe eric Bieniemy was there who knows but these formal meetings are not to be taken lightly these are serious because like a senior bowl and formal meeting and maybe they talk to him real quick so i mean there's clear interest there if they took the time to do that but don't buy it as much as a formal combine meeting especially with the center olu watimi from michigan senior bowl and formal meeting an individual coaching and a formal meeting at the combine they not playing with him same thing with jordan mcfadden maybe if you want to attack offensive line especially debt wise or maybe get a project like a jordan mcfadden later in the draft they've already shown that they're interested in him twice and then you also have lance boykin the cornerback from coastal carolina they haven't met with them but i have them on the list and again connections i identify exactly where the connection is there's a video of jack del rio impressed with his drills he did some drill where he had to flip his hips and change direction and accelerate immediately and it like immediately panned the jack del rio with the camera right afterwards and he was like oh okay so you know even though there isn't a formal meeting here and they haven't exactly shown direct interest in this guy i put him on a list and i wrote zero times confirmed times met or referenced because if Rivera talks about a player I'm gonna include them and count that and then I'm just gonna indicate that he talked about the player but may not have necessarily had a formal combine meeting
meeting. But if they've already had a formal combine meeting and Rivera gets up in some press conference or some virtual interview and brings up Christian Gonzalez, then I'm going to put a number two here and add in that Rivera talked about Christian Gonzalez and things like that. And again, we got pro days coming up. We got all kinds of stuff coming up. But again, the first round is littered with offense alignment. The whole thing is littered with offense alignment. Second round, third round. Again, if you want to take a really long look at the list, you can pause this video or the link to this PDF is literally in the comment section right below this video in the description of this video so whenever you want access to that you can always come to it it's free whenever you want to i put this together every year so make sure y'all subscribe for more content like this because again i'm gonna keep updating this list and keep y'all informed of what's going on but again man offensive line man they are not playing i mean it's clearly to me outside of franchise quarterback and again we may have that in sam howe offensive line is clearly our biggest need and then even the same logic with sam howe maybe chris paul is a really good left guard maybe somebody on our depth chart doubt it but like maybe Wes Schweitzer could be a franchise center even though he's an unrestricted free agent so we got to bring him back maybe he's that interior offensive lineman that we need to start at left guard or center if Chase Roulier gets hurt and then maybe they just end up keeping Samuel Cosme at right tackle and trying to figure out guard maybe it's Wes Schweitzer at guard who knows but it's clearly a huge need but you never know same thing with Sam Howell maybe we already have the guy on roster I don't believe so offensive line wise I do believe so quarterback wise but again you never know now of course my favorite offensive tackle in the draft is Broderick Jones but I love Darnell Wright's potential and remember Will Anderson when asked about who was the hardest offensive tackle that you had to go against in the 2022 season he said Darnell Wright straight up and remember also Darnell Wright didn't allow a single sack all season this past 2022 season and again he had the block against Will Anderson now granted Will Anderson didn't get a chance to go against Broderick Jones because Alabama wanted to be bad and lose so many games that they couldn't even face us in the playoffs and that's not Broderick Jones's fault so even though Will Anderson did say Darnell Wright was the best tackle he faced all season he didn't get a chance to go against Broderick Jones to compare the two and again I'm a big fan of both I like a lot of these tackles I'd be happy to get Paris Johnson Broderick Jones Peter Skaronski Dewan Jones any of these guys now at 16th overall the only ones I'd be happy to get is Broderick Jones Paris Johnson Jr and then I like Anton Harrison even though they haven't necessarily shown interest in him yet I believe at least reportedly and then I would be almost willing to take Darnell Wright at 16th overall I believe in his talent that much and I don't think he's gonna make it to the second round like the draft network still has him especially after that combine but I felt like if you just really go look at the tape and then Mel Kuyper I believe had him mocked to 16th overall I may do a video on that and everything too but I don't think he makes it to our second round pick so if you want him you're gonna have to take him in the first but again i personally prefer Broderick jones and then i mean if you want to do like a little mock draft based on this and of course i'm gonna do my own most realistic mock draft right before the draft like the draft is late april in the 20s like 26 or something like that maybe by like the 22nd or 23rd i'm gonna do a mock draft completely based on this list and i'm gonna try to give y'all the most realistic possible mock draft with undrafted free agents included who are these guys potentially or maybe even some of these guys maybe even some of these guys and so as of right now ideally for me if for some crazy reason Christian Gonzalez is there at 16 or within range for us to trade up then maybe you do that so you get Christian Gonzalez at 16th overall in the first round man Joe Tipman y'all know I've been heavy on him I've been mocking him to us several times so far since going back into the regular season of the 2022 season just now and then this offseason as well I've mocked him in like two or three of my mock drafts to us and I'm just so sad to see that he's the 37th overall player on the draft network because just a few months ago he was projected to potentially go in the third or fourth round so that makes me sad but if you want to do Christian Gonzalez in the first and then maybe I mean say somehow Darnell Washington makes it to our second round pick I doubt it that's dream case scenario for me Christian Gonzalez and Darnell Washington at that point I don't even care about who we draft for the rest of the draft but let's just stay relatively realistic say Christian Gonzalez in the first Darnell Wright in the second I guess maybe Joe Tipman at center but they, they apparently love Christopher Smith as well he said that their formal meeting combine with Rivera personally there to speak to him himself went really well and then maybe you go my boy another one of 
my guys. Joe Tipton is one of my guys. Deion Henley is also another one of my guys. Played receiver for three years in college, then switched to linebacker his senior year. All kinds of potential. Flash so much. He's a first round talent, but a lot of people are not going to trust him because of how raw he is after only playing linebacker for only one year. But I, man, Christian Gonzalez in the first, Joe Tipton or Darnell Wright in the second, and Deion Henley in the third. I literally don't even care what happens with the rest of this draft. But I guess continuing just to see. I mean, maybe you go Britton Strange in the fourth. Then maybe Eric Gray or Jake Andrews or maybe a kicker if you don't trust Joey Sly in the sixth. And then maybe some depth at offensive line. But um, one interesting person that got added to this list in this video that was in the previous video is that they had a formal combine interview with demario douglas who's technically a receiver but we would clearly be bringing him in here to be a returner and i've said man returner i feel like is an underrated need for us man i have explosive returner right under safety above kicker above third down back edge depth wide receiver depth whatever and so if that's a guy that they may be targeting as an undrafted free agent or maybe in the seventh round i would be very happy dax milne is a safe returner but i call him automatic fair catch because it doesn't matter if he fair catches it or not the ball isn't going to move much from where he caught it anyway and i would love to bring in an explosive guy to at least compete and we got antonio gibson on kickoffs and i would love to throw curtis samuel Jahan dotson or one of those guys back there on punt returns but i feel like the commanders feel like they're too valuable to risk it so bring it into mario douglas and see what he can do let him compete with dax mill and if he wins the job let's get it some explosion, man. I want some more DeAndre Carter back. Even though DeAndre Carter technically had a worse season than Dax Mill statistically. But what he did for us, I don't know what the Chargers did with him. I haven't looked at the tape. But what he did for us was definitely better than what we got from Dax Mill in this past season. So I don't know what the Chargers did wrong. But I still like DeAndre Carter. And I would at the very least like to bring in a DeAndre Carter like guy if we can. Especially later in the draft. Or as an undrafted free agent, that would be a home run hit to me. Y'all know I love my undrafted free agents. My boy Armani Rogers, man. So excited about him at tight end but again i don't want to just sit here and read out every name we'll be here for hours so again this exact link to this exact pdf is free is in the comment section as a pinned comment by me and in the description of the video so if you want access to that you can come back anytime any day any moment and access this list and again i'm gonna keep updating y'all on these lists every time we get more prospects because if we just find out that we interview one more guy tomorrow i'm not gonna do an entire video for it but whenever we add like 10 or more people to it or if something monumental happens like the pro days and stuff like that immediately after pro days happen especially like the majority of them i'm gonna do an updated video on this so make sure y'all stay tuned for that but yeah man that's the end of this video please get in the comment section let me know how you feel about everything discussed in this video please leave a like on this video if you liked it if you learned anything as always man i appreciate all the support man shout out to all of my sponsors especially my pro bowl sponsors whose name you see scrolling on the screen right now now, man i'm gonna catch y'all later again stay tuned i'm gonna keep updating y'all on this i'm gonna start working on film sessions for draft prospects we're about to get into a lot of free agency stuff i still have more mock drafts coming out especially like my scenarios again the final one i'm gonna do is gonna be based on that list and it's gonna be the most realistic one but before then i want to do a trade up scenario i want to do another trade back scenario i'm working on an all defense scenario well not all defense but majority defense assuming that we handle everything offense and free agency so that when we get to the draft we can do everything we can to make this defense make sure 100 sure it's gonna be a top five defense so make sure you stay tuned for all of that content and i'm gonna catch y'all later i'm out oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah.